Hey guys, this is HD, and welcome to Game 2 here between Puma and Lucky from the Assembly Winter 3rd place consolation matchup. This is for $1,000 and $3,000 respectively. So far, the Terran player Puma has taken the advantage in this uh, in this series by winning the first game. The next map, though, is going to be Court Hall Compound, and this is a new map for me. Haven't actually, I haven't played a, map, uh, a game on this map yet, and I should, but... Um, I'm not even going to tell you guys the win rate statistics for this map, and the reason for that is because there hasn't been even that many games played on it. I looked it up, and there's been a total of 10 recorded matches so far, so the the sample size is so small that there really isn't any point to talking about the win rate stats on this map, except to say that it's such a new map that any player can win here, and um, there is no you know historical backing for either side, so this is going to be very interesting. I love the map design as well too, guys great uh, little jungle and modern kind of uh, tile set, a uh, little mix of both, and I mentioned this before, a little bit of interesting Tetris design of grass here. Definitely the architect who made the natural expansion, who pl who plowed the lawn here, was um, not the most aesthetically pleasing person, but uh, regardless of that, this is this should be a good matchup here. I haven't seen any that many TBZs at all uh, on Core Hall Compound. So uh, should be pretty exciting. Puma going to be the blue Terran at the top right-hand corner, opening up with the barracks and a uh, refinery on the Vespine Geyser to the north. Down in the bottom left-hand corner, we do have Lucky, who will be opting to go for the 15 hatchery. And that is a pretty greedy opening from the Zerg, but they can pull it off. This is a one-on-one -on -one map, though, so there is opportunities here for Puma to go ahead and strike right away to the natural. Unlike Terminus, where you don't really know where the Zerg has spawned until you've scouted or until the Overlord has come into your base, um, there is opportunities here for Puma to go ahead and open with some type of early aggression. And we'll see if he decides to do that. Uh, we have a little bit of a dance here between the drone and the SCV. And we can see what Lucky's trying to do here is keep that SCV from building that supply depot for as long as possible. And he's going to try to interrupt it, but missed his opportunity right there. And uh, I guess at the, uh, at the other end of the spectrum, also using it to scout the front door. And now he's going to go ahead and pull back. Awesome Terran rock music has now begun, so uh, prepare yourselves, gentlemen and ladies, for the battle ahead. Uh, we'll have to see what happens. We do see that SCV making its way over to the natural here, gonna cross onto the Architect's Lawn and make its way over to the Zerg Creep. And nothing to really see here that's quite interesting yet. And we do have a spawning pool coming up, but that's nothing. Uh, that It would actually be interesting if there wasn't a spawning pool coming up, if you catch my drift. Because if you didn't have a spawning pool coming up, then I'm sure most Terran players, and Puma included, would just throw down another barracks and rush Marines in bunkers. But there is a spawning pool on the way, so nothing crazy there and there is a factory coming out for puma as well making use of that first initial 100 gas and continuing to mine gas with three scvs apiece so he is going to uh, most likely you know get those upgrades get that tech rolling on the terran side um, we'll see if he opts to throw down additional barracks uh, if he opts to go for that command center which is the most likely transition and there is the command center coming down so uh, no kind of one base shenanigans coming out of puma and uh, it really looks like for now both players are just kind of settling on their bases, continuing to macro up their advantages, uh, and neither side is going to try to take any type of risky play. And, and by risky play, I'm mainly looking at Lucky right now because he has shown the propensity to go ahead and do very crazy things, and I would like you guys to all re recall yourselves to that matchup, that, that matchup where... Uh, Lucky blocked Mana's natural with a hatchery. That was so interesting. And watching that matchup, I would honestly feel like you could do that to almost any Protoss and pull it off successfully. Uh, and I was asking myself, what can Protoss do short of being forced to go into some type of one base all in themselves? That is really, I think, the only response to being able to combat that. And I have talked to, um, I have talked to actually Puma's teammate, uh, Inca, if you guys uh, might recall EG Inca, who's another player on uh, Evil Genius's team, um, I'm actually good friends with him, and he told me, you know, the only way to combat that natural blocking is to go for some type of one base Protoss all in. So um, that's that. And we do have some aliens coming in here, but they were blocked off, and it looks like one got picked off by Lucky. Nice play. And unlike the last game where Lucky lost, oh, I don't know, what, three, four drones, and then he uh, proceeded to let his all in get scouted, this time he has blocked it off. He's He's killed off a Hellion, and he's made Puma wonder, is there an all-in coming? Because he just doesn't know, and that might force him to drop a Comsat into the main, you know, just to make sure. And we can see right now, uh, he is going to go ahead and transition with more barracks. 
Also getting the stim pack upgrade for his marines and a reactor core on the factory. So interesting that he would leave the original factory to build another reactor on a secondary on a secondary location. Um, I wonder what he's just going to do with this open spot right here because there is an open spot for something to land there And I felt like that was a little bit early to lift off the factory You could actually he could have made another squad of Hellions But it looks like he is going to go ahead and just forget the whole Hellion uh, Production route and try to get I guess the barracks over there and uh, pump out mass Marines so uh, That seems to be his strategy here, and he's not gonna have nearly as many Hellions as most Terrans would and uh, back over on Lucky's side, he is making more Evo Chambers. He's going to try to get those upgrades rolling for himself, getting a natural hatchery as well. And we'll hope to see the Zerg here go ahead and grab a third hatchery pretty soon. Loses a creep tumor and cancels the other tumor as well. And uh, <laughs> That's really smart to do. You, some players might not know this, but if you cancel the creep tumor... As it's morphing out, you save the ability for the original tumor that spawned it to make it again. So we can see right now that Lucky can remake that creep tumor should he choose to. Uh, but for now, he's got to get rid of those Hellions at the Zonaga Tower before he can even begin to think about that. And hopefully he does do that pretty soon here because those Hellions are going to blockade that creep spread from going out across the map. Meanwhile, uh, back inside the Zerg base, we do have a layer coming up finally. That's a pretty late layer too, I might add, guys. Usually Zergs will have that layer you know, finishing up around the 9 minute mark, but he's got a pretty late layer. But because he did that, he's going to have so much more drones. And if you look at that income tab, 53 drones to 39 harvesters. And it was actually a much bigger gap right when I opened up that tab. So uh, the Zurich here really having that economic lead, which is so important to, to hold on to. And um, for now, Puma should think about going to uh, get another command center pretty soon here. He doesn't really have that macro CC that he opted to go for in the first game. Rather, deciding to go for more of a conventional playstyle, but he is moving out across the map right now with some Hellions and Marines. He's going to comsat the creep tumors, picking them off. That's very important to do. And not going to overextend himself, so just kind of poking at the tumorage, picking off a little bit here or there, and then going to go ahead and fall back. He loses the... Uh, Marine at the Zanaga Tower, but will reinforce that location, but right now there are a bunch of Zerglings coming in here, and oh my goodness, Puma completely caught off guard, but it looks like Lucky just didn't have enough Zerglings to break that area down, especially with the two medevacs up in the air, but now he's got enough, as he waited for reinforcements, the medevacs completely evacuating all forces out of that location, and uh, saving their comrades in battle, so nice play right there by Puma, now going to drop inside the main, but there is such a flood of Zerglings, there's so many Zerglings here, I don't think that Puma's going to be able to really extract any damage at all and unlike the first game lucky's zergling strategy here mass zerglings is starting to uh, make a good deal of sense so uh, we'll see how the game continues to progress but what a location right there uh for those uh, hellions to drop in in that little jut uh but it does look like a couple of them getting picked off and will the zerglings commit to breaking this location it's very important to hold the zonaga tower and especially before the marine reinforcements arrive and the zerglings are trying to flood in but only one pack at a time and that is not a good idea at all and it looks like lucky has to fall back lucky should have engaged with both forces one to the left and one to the right uh but you know his hesitation there ended up costing him because the hellions and marines uh, had enough time to clump up and were able to dish out lethal flamethrower and gauss rifle damage and take out that squad of zerglings and now the third is under a lot of trouble because puma stimmed up his entire squadron of frontal marines and he's gonna go in here and decide to take out the third and where have we seen this before that's right puma trying to erect that embargo on the zerg third can he pull it off there is fungal growth on the field though and that is gonna completely counter the marines the Zerglings completely destroying that um, entire attack and the hatchery will be allowed to go up and Lucky looking much, much better in this game than the last game, ladies and gentlemen, as he's deflected basically not only the frontal attack here and the drop inside the main, but the fungal growth absolutely decimating the marine army and uh, doing a very, very good job at that. So now we have some Zerglings beginning to run across the map over to the left, but there is a huge drop going on inside the main once again, and that really is the keys to victory for Terran against Zerg, just continually to drop the main, continue to drop the natural, apply pressure in multiple locations, and it looks like he's going to go for the spawning pool, ladies and gentlemen, if he gets a spawning pool down, this is going to completely shut down Lucky's strategy, but Lucky going to attack with whatever Zerglings he's got on the field, and is going to deny the third, at least force it to lift off a grub the ground, but there is no spawning pool right now, and my goodness, this is such a vulnerable timing for Lucky because he cannot make his 
is essentially his bread and butter unit if he, if you're gonna go with the zergling infester style that is your bread and butter he cannot make any more zerglings right now they do have two two that's about to finish but uh the zerglings right now are uh <laughs> an endangered species so to say they need their own little wildlife preserve and they should probably run back home and just keep themselves safe oh there was a drop once again at the third and puma was able to take it out i do apologize i didn't see that guys but puma doing the double prong drop uh, excessively multitasking here uh, exceptionally well and uh, unfortunately i did not catch that and he may actually have an avenue here to go ahead and strike into the spawning pool in the natural now, which is the rever uh, the revised version of that spawning pool. Puma poised to strike once again. There is a queen over here, and it will be able to poke out that medevac just a little bit. So good awareness from Lucky Lucky, realizing that there is a drop there. I'm surprised he's not saving some forces over here. It looks like most of his army is across the map right now, so endangered species or not, he is going to try to be very bold with these zerglings uh but now he's gonna go ahead and run back home and i guess you realize that there is a medevac back there and he doesn't want to lose a spawning pool for a second time today meanwhile we do have the hive that just finished up good play from lucky so far who is also throwing down a couple spores and spines to uh, deflect additional drops which is a very good idea but lucky is really down in bases right now ladies and gentlemen he lost the third which, deja vu, basically, from the last game, he was down a base. Uh, and he does have Hive Tech finished. So he is researching the Kiteness Plating and the plus three ground armor. So he's going to have a lot of Ultras, I suppose, coming out soon. But the problem is, can he afford the Ultras? He doesn't have a third base. And if you're going to go for Ultras into, and Hive Tech, you need the, four, the fifth and sixth gas, which he does not have right now. These Marines are continuing to threaten that location. Puma very well knows right now that this is the focal point. If he can delay the gas intake, if he can delay the third, then he knows that Hive Tech will not be a threat at all. And he's going to drop into the main. And oh, the Ultras Cavern is there. But it looks like there were no Marines inside that medevac. They must have dropped um, into these spine crawlers or something. I don't know what happened. But those Marines are no longer present. It's a ghost ship. <laughs> and uh, it looks like Lucky is finally able to at least... Uh, get a little bit of breathing room because there are no imminent threats around nearby It's just an empty medevac over here with 22 health and uh, he's gonna be able to finally expand over to the fourth So good job from lucky to deflect everything, but he is at a disadvantage. So I feel like he's down a base um, Well, actually he's gonna be up a base soon if he can get that fourth up But uh, he's three base to three base right now, which is not good and there is another medevac drop coming in It is gonna cross paths with the overlord and immediately lucky or excuse me puma realizing that hey overlord see me probably not a good idea to drop but rather clear out the drop lanes and make it more viable for drops to occur in the future so he picks off two overlords right there and uh, lucky gonna try to get his infestors in range i don't think he can see through the fog though uh yeah he can actually he might be able to get a fungal growth off if he's really really lucky meanwhile an overlord going down over on the right hand side of the map and he gets a fungal so he can fungal this dropship off but he decides, yeah, there we go. There's a fungal growth. So he needs about three or four fungals to finish off that medevac. And I'm surprised Puma isn't moving it. There we go. Puma moving the medevac out of range of any more infestors. And that uh, squad of Marines probably just breathed the biggest sigh of relief and probably wiped the most sweat from their brows uh, after that. So they are going to remain alive. Uh, but there is another drop or the, another squadron of Marines and Marauders moving out that is picked off by the infestors. And it does look like we have a late game composition from Lucky, who's got five Ultras on the field with two more on the way, Banelings and Infestors as well. So I'm actually really, really surprised, guys, that Lucky has been able to afford all of this. You know, considering that he was down a base for the longest time, he's still not mining out of the fort. He's got one drone there. I don't think you can consider that really mining. Uh, so his army, you know, it's pretty large, all things considered, but Puma has the much much more powerful army look at how many tanks he's got the one thing he i'm surprised he doesn't have going for him is his tank upgrades are a little bit low it's just plus one weapons right now it, it looks like he focused on getting the marine upgrades but uh, we'll see how this plays out here lucky going in but there's too many siege tanks and he has to fall back he might want to wait for more ultras to come or try to flank this army from the backside. In fact, if he can get up on the high ground here and run around the back, that would be a really cute play. Or he can run around the left right here and flank the Terran army. He also has the opportunity to just all-out counterattack the Terran front door as well. And any of those possibilities, I think, any of those 
opportunities are much better than just slamming headlong into a Terran force like this at a choke point. So that's not going to be the best win case scenario for uh, Lucky. And Lucky might want to I want to think about how he's going to approach this engagement. It's very important here to use your noggin and uh, and figure out exactly how to engage that Terran army. Meanwhile, also sending in a Zergling over to the top left-hand corner. There is a Planetary Fortress on the way. That Planetary Fortress will probably roast that Zergling up pretty quickly once it comes up, and boom, down it goes. Meanwhile, also a Medivac coming around the back of the Zerg fourth here, and that it looks like it dropped off maybe one force but was immediately eliminated but we can see the same pattern of events playing out again where puma is all over the aggressive front is sieging up leapfrogging his tanks getting ever more closer to the zerg and lucky does not have an answer for this he has maxed out ultralists i'm surprised he hasn't decided to fight yet and here we go he is going to engage the tanks are very thin at this uh southern area and it looks like he is going to be able to claw his way through those tanks and is he going to shove his way through this terran army he gets a fungal growth off that's a beautiful fungal and those ultras should be able to clean this up easy peasy nice drop right there from lucky who totally ravages the terran army gets another fungal growth off and oh my god if he can kill off all these medevacs what an absolute crushing victory for him can he get the medevacs down he has more fungal growth energy no he does not and the medevacs aren't allowed to flee uh i i was surprised that he did not uh spawn some infested terrans those medevacs are so crucial to take apart and they were so close look at how much health they had left 10 10 health 20 health uh 22 health they were so close to going down and unfortunately lucky did not spawn any infested terrans to finish those off so medevacs will be allowed to regroup with the army and recuperate their energy uh there was a marine over here that was quickly dealt with by two zerglings and uh let's just take a tally real quick on the bases puma right now on one two uh three four bases total most of his production being outside of the main and the natural lucky on one two three wow that's a lot of ultras four bases total as well so it's four base versus four base oh, excuse me there's a fifth base over here as well so five bases total so it is an it is the right amount of bases if you're looking for a balanced matchup but uh lucky i still feel like it isn't that far ahead um he's not even even i don't think with puma right now because puma is just going to take out another hatchery over here too close to this planetary fortress too close to the terran forces for comfort and on top of that i really feel like lucky if he's going to win this game he's got to get some ultras out across the map either that or go for some surprise bro banelings something has to play out for him here and he's going to go into the field here with some infested terrans leading the charge and oh wow he's going to completely force the retreat of puma and he's going to take out the planetary fortress over at the top left hand corner well done by lucky uh I love what he did right there, leading with the burrowed infested uh, investors so they could not be scouted, spawning infested Terrans. That was a really cute play, but it looks like Puma just took out uh, the hatchery at the third once again. Look at how close that medevac was, and I'm telling you guys that medevac was probably one of the medevacs earlier on, and if it had been picked off, this drop might not have happened. So you can see how StarCraft 2 really snowballs. It's a snowball effect, and every mistake you make, it just compounds on itself. And Puma has exploited the medevac, totally taking out this hatchery, my goodness. And so it's if you look at the last few minutes of this game, the Terran player has killed off two hatcheries. The Zerg player has only killed off one planetary fortress, and that is not an even trade at all. And we can see Puma, thrilled and motivated by the recent chain of success, is going to continue the assault through the ground there is an investor there but uh just one puny fungal growth maybe two they're gonna hold off the attack for a little bit but the terran position is very good right now uh, lucky is going to have to slam into this army but the closer and deeper he goes in the more tanks he has to deal with and it looks like he took too long and the hatchery went down so another hatchery going down for lucky and lucky is he gonna run in here oh man he just lost about half of his banelings for nothing that is another expenditure, another a bunch of wasted resources this game, man. He's got to learn how to control that spending because those beanlings don't come cheap. Uh, and I don't know what he's going to do at this point. He's down to three... Uh, well, actually, only two bases, and he's trying to re-erect the third and the fourth base, so not a good position at all. Time to cancel the fourth once again. So Puma is continuing to apply pressure, also finds the ninja hatchery at the top left-hand corner and cancels that one so good great puma is just on fire right now 
and uh, is really eradicating the Zerg. He's uh, serving eviction notices to all these hatcheries. And uh, wherever the Ultras go, it's kind of like watching a game of chess. Because wherever the Ultras go, to the, if they go to the top left and they put the forces over there in checkmate or in, I guess, in a position of, of danger, then he just attacks on another side of the board over to the bottom right. And so he just continues to strike where the Zerg is not. And he's made it work so well, just a master of multitasking that Puma has been really showcased in this game and he's going to be able to take off the third once again it looks like no he has to retreat because the ultras and investors have had enough they're going to slam into this terran encampment there's a lot of ultras here that's a lot of ultras man and the fungal growth's going down i think the ultras will be able to clean up unbelievable and the banelings crashing through and this time will lucky take out those medivacs or not he can't yet because he's got to worry about the uh, reinforcements to the north and i cannot believe lucky just slammed his way through that army and completely took it out well done right there and I guess it just showcases the power of having that many Ultras because they do build up in mass just like Siege Kings do. When you have a critical amount like that, you can win a lot of battles. You don't have to worry about a lot of stuff. And we can see that Lucky just smash mouth his way through everything and he won. He actually won that battle, but the battle is not equal to the war. Every little battle does count, and that was not cost efficient, two banelings for an SCV. But uh, every battle does count, and I don't know if at the end of the day that was, that it's going to help, but I don't know if it's going to uh, uh, ascertain him victory or not, because we can see the supply still favoring the Terran player here. Puma can rebuild his forces very, very quickly, whereas Lucky, he traded about half of his army to kill off the entire Terran army, but... Can he rebuild as fast as the Terran? And if we look at the banked resources right now, it does look like both players actually kind of starving for minerals. But at the income rate, we can see the Terran player, with the help of those mules, really having the advantage. <laughs> there is a bro circling over there, so that's kind of cute. Preventing the command center from landing down. And that's a fresh intake of resources that Zerg does not want Puma to have. So that's very good to do. There is another Marauder snipe inbound right now, but there's no hatchery to take out, so he's just going to go for the drones instead. Wow, what a game thus far. And uh, I still I, I still think that Lucky has a good chance to win this game. Look at the army he's got on the field. He's still got a healthy number of Ultras and Infestors. And it's going to take a good amount of Fungal Growth, a good engagement, and he can still win this game. But he is a little bit behind right now. Just got to figure out how he's going to plan his next moves. The base is running out of... Uh, not the base, the map is running out of money, mind you, as well. We can see that there's really only one or two bases left that can be fully mined out, maybe three or four, but um, that does mean that this game will be forced to expire within the next 10 to 20 minutes, uh, and then it's just going to come down to whatever forces you got left on the map is what you're going to have to fight with. So uh, Puma looks like he's going to be able to mine this location over here. Uh, will he be able to land some meals down just to maximize his mining time? It doesn't look like he will. Uh, will Lucky actually strike that location? He should. He doesn't want to let the Terran mine for free. And we can see that income tab really favoring the mineral intake for the Terran right now at pretty much double the minerals that the Zerg has. And it looks like he is going to strike this location. Meanwhile, there is another Marauder strike over here at the third. So that hatchery could go down. It looks like the SCVs over here were taken out. And luckily for uh, Lucky... He didn't encounter much resistance over here, so he is going to be able to force that command center to lift off and go away. But what about the assault over here? And what about the impending forces marching onto the creep? Puma knows the Zerg is out of position because he just saw all of them in the top left-hand corner. And this is his opportunity to strike. And he is not going to diddle-daddly around. He is going to go out and go for the gusto. Um... Will he engage here or not? It looks like both armies are being set to fight, but the medevacs are out of position, and all the medevacs here are getting chain fungal. That is not good for the Marines and Marauders. They will not have the capacity to heal. This is the moment that Lucky has been waiting for. Lucky kills off um, some of the medevacs, but not all, but then he gets a great amount of fungal growth down, and the Ultras are going to totally clean up that army. Once again, another great engagement by Lucky, but does he have enough forces on the ground to clean up? He's only got two Ultras left gonna have to rely on his infested Terrans to clean this battlefield up can he do it or not meanwhile another drop going off over in the top left hand corner so Puma is just all over the place and Lucky has to GG he can't continue to fight this out wow that was such a good game of Starcraft 2 uh, literally I'm shaking with sweat right now after watching that game that was a 33 minute absolute brawl Lucky loses again but this is a best of five so it does mean that we're going to have at least one more game coming out for you guys. Possibly, if Lucky can tie this up, 
a total of five. So I hope you guys enjoyed so far. Wow, I can't believe how how well Lucky managed his battles in that in this game. I mean, you know, he was behind in supply, behind in economy. Uh, Puma obviously playing a much better game, but Lucky really fungal growthing perfectly, getting ultras in the front perfectly. Sometimes they'll get blocked up by zerglings or infestors, but he managed his army. Uh, about as well as you possibly could considering the deficits and he almost made a game out of that so very close very very close indeed we're going to go on to game three hope you guys enjoyed this is hd signing out to the next one